One of the first questions that comes up after the introduction of event sourcing is about the performance of rebuilding thousands of aggregates. Well, querying back a number of events and applying them to an aggregate is extremely fast, faster than using an ORM that is relatively far more complex. But it's a good question, which is often grounded in thoughts like, what if you want to construct a list of all orders that have been marked as completed? Do we have to reconstitute every single order in the system to check its state before trimming down the list to those that are ready to be shipped? Right now, what we have to work with is a stream of events and our domain model code. So given that this is it, this is what we have to work with. Ask yourself, how do we even know how many orders are in the system? After all, there's not some central listing of all orders. So what do we do? We're starting to see the limitations of a write model. Our aggregate is a write model because its use case is to change the state of the system. It's not queryable. We can't say, give me all of the orders that have been completed. It's not well suited to reading state at all. Frankly, aggregates don't typically even have getter methods for fields because the aggregate has one job, ensuring that the intention is executed and updating the application state. That's the use case for our aggregate, and for that, it performs well. The purpose of a write model is to change state, and when event sourcing, it does that by raising events. But what if we have a different use case? What if we want to list orders based on criteria? Then we have a completely different model. Our ideas about what it is to be an order listing directly differ from our ideas about ensuring the validity of an order lifecycle change. If we try to unify these use cases into one model, it'll grow in size and the scope will extend outside of one context. When our models bridge multiple contexts, we end up with a lot of added complexity as we try to generate a single system that awkwardly represents multiple systems. Then, imagine that you need a third use case, a fourth, a fifth. The maintainability of this model is just plummeting every time we expect it to handle more. What we can do instead is create a unique model for each and every context. If we need an order listing, we can create a new kind of model, a read model. If we need a customer listing, we create another read model, etc. Each querying use case results in a new read model. The idea of a read model is to have usually a data model, often wrapped for presentation, that is specifically designed for viewing the system state. A perfect example is an order listing. So what does our ideal order listing look like? Perhaps we have the ID of the order, the customer's ID, the product listing, and its status. We might want to be able to query against it with SQL. So for this example, let's just use a relational database. So how do we get from the store of events to the data model? Our events capture change over time. Events are raised when something changes and let us know the nature of the change. Our aggregates are these business processes, right? So as events are raised, the details of the process update, the state of the process changes. These are both heavily temporal in nature. Our read model, on the other hand, is locked in time. It's a snapshot of the state as it existed at a very specific moment. The order listing as it stands at 8.41 in the morning on September 21st, for example. It doesn't hold a history of all changes. It shows the state at a particular moment in time. To build up to that snapshot of state, we use a process called projection. Projection is the process of consuming a domain event, then directly updating the state of a model. To illustrate this process, let's step through a few of the events in the lifecycle of our order and look at how we can create our order listing. First, an order is placed, and we receive an order was placed event. From the payload of the event, we'll know what products are listed, the ID of the order, and the customer ID. In order to get from an empty order listing, we need to be able to add a record to the order listing table. How does that look? Probably something like this. Once this query is executed, our order listing is completely up to date with our system state. But then the order is confirmed by an employee. The order was confirmed event is raised. How do we update our order listing? Well, we can probably do something like this. Okay, so now we're up to date. We keep making this kind of change to our read model every time a new domain event is raised that's related to this projection. What we have is a data model, a set of data that's designed to be specifically used for a querying use case. We're able to query against this model using all the normal tools for relational databases and use the return data to complete our use case of providing a searchable order listing. This order listing data model does not exist to update the state of the application. If we arbitrarily change the customer ID of an order in this database table, it doesn't actually change the customer ID in the state of the application, just for the use case of providing an order listing. It'll probably cause an error somewhere. 
The only way that we can actually update the state of the application is through write models. These write models exist to guard the business rules, so they must be the originators of domain events that have business rules. Then the domain events are dispatched through an event dispatcher, and event listeners respond to them by updating read models. Event listeners that update read models are called projectors. Projectors update projections. A read model that's created from the projector is called a projection because it's a projection of the application state as of a specific moment in time. Now, this is a good time to mention CQRS, or Command Query Responsibility Segregation. CQRS is a pattern for interacting with an application that specifically separates commands which update application state from queries which return state. The core idea is that any process that you execute to update state should not return state, and any process that you execute to query state should not make updates. This allows for us to optimize for reads and writes separately. Often applications use models that have implementation for both reads and writes, but these models tend to become very large and often problematic as the use cases for reads and writes tend to diverge heavily, especially due to the fact that a single unified model might easily be required to satisfy 50 read use cases. Instead, we can build models to meet specific goals. We need to collect and guard business rules so that we can create a history of change over time, so we use an aggregate as a write model. We need to provide an order listing page, so we use a projection as a read model specifically for that use case. We might also need to create a product listing on our storefront, so we create a specific read model for that. We chose to use Elasticsearch in this case so that we could have a sophisticated search system. We might want to create spreadsheet reports with up-to-date analytics, so we create them as read models. In addition to relational databases, you can project the state of an application into any usable format, including document stores or whatever you need to satisfy your use case. CQRS also allows us to optimize in new and interesting ways. Our event store only stores events, then retrieves them based on a single field, the ID. Our aggregates have simple performance needs. We request events for the aggregate, rebuild it, interact with it, and then store the events it raises. Our domain events can be dispatched to a message bus that crosses over many systems. We can have downstream subscribers that pick up the events and update projections on completely different systems. This approach is incredibly scalable. Our reads are tremendously scalable because they can be distributed across many systems and across the world if needed. Since we're building read models for specific use cases, we can make very specific technology decisions. Events can be projected into Elasticsearch or Solar so that we can have the search features that we want for our storefront while we're able to use a relational database management system like MySQL or Postgres to create easily queryable and sortable listings of orders. We've decoupled all query use cases from our write model. It's now a much smaller, much simpler to understand model that's entirely focused on business rules and processes. It's worthwhile to note that you don't need to use CQRS just to have a read model. When using normal structural models, models that are focused on the current state of an application and its shape, domain events and read models are still extremely effective. Imagine a typical product model built with an object relational mapper. It's persisted by copying its internal state to a database, then retrieved by hydrating the model from the database records. You can raise domain events from inside the product model, much like you might do with an aggregate, then dispatch those events. A projector could listen for them, then update Elasticsearch or other external systems with the data so that you can get the high performance benefits. This isn't event sourcing, but neither is CQRS. Event sourcing is using domain events as the sole source of state for one or more components of an application. CQRS is creating and separating write models from read models. Commands go in, nothing comes back out. Queries go in, you retrieve your state, and nothing is modified. There are two different concepts that happen to fit together to create compelling systems. However, ultimately, use case-specific read models can be generated entirely without using CQRS.